Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free with true solutions to heal for real from narcissistic abuse and painful relationship patterns. More than just information to survive, you are granted the tools to thrive. In today's episode, I want to share with you my top three tips for recovering from narcissistic abuse, where we're going to take a deep dive into why acceptance, which is initially so painful, is vital. Number two is release the need to know and seek the emotional feeling journey rather than the head journey. And number three, how to claim the magnificence of your healing development and emergence as your true self. Okay, so before we get started in this deep dive, I want you to remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and like this video if it resonates with you. All right, let's get going on this. So the first point that I want to talk about, the first of my tips, it's, it's the beginning, is the acceptance of what has happened to you. You might know that expression, the truth sets you free. It's so important if you're in denial or if you're in resistance to the truth, that just delays your healing journey and can actually stunt it indefinitely. You may never heal unless you accept the truth. Because this is the thing, you know, if we don't accept the truth and start evolving and healing into a truthful, authentic being, you're going to be in resistance to the truth. And what happens is whatever you're not accepting in your life is going to keep smashing you to get your attention to crack you open into the acceptance of the truth. And I love the understanding that pain is inevitable. You're not going to escape the pain and the trauma, but suffering is optional. And unless you accept the truth, you're going to be in suffering. Because eventually you have to come home to the maker. You have to come home to the truth. And none of us want to be doing that on our deathbed because then you never get to truly live. You want to be doing that as soon as you can. And of course, it's agonizing to, to, to start off with, to accept the truth. You don't want to accept that this person didn't really love you, that they were dishonest, that they betrayed you, that they didn't have your best interests at heart, and that really you were a commodity. You were an item to them. You're an object for them to get energy and stuff from, and it wasn't real love. Now, initially, that's very, very painful to accept, and I want you to know this about this first step of acceptance when that trauma is within you, you know, with things like NARP, my Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, that intense trauma of this wasn't love. You can release that. You can bring in a warm acceptance and a peace with that rather than battling that off and on for years. Because if you're stuck in the battle of that, you may really believe that I'm unlovable and I'm unworthy and I'm defective and I must be a really bad person. And, you know, that's going to keep you stuck in the illusion that you're only as lovable and as worthy as how somebody else is treating you. And that's a false premise. That's not the truth at all. When you can accept the truth, you come home to the truth of my love, lovability and my worthiness is to do with the relationship that I'm having with myself. That's the foundation of everything, which leads us then to my second point, which is so important from your healing. Once you get to accept the truth, you move on to letting go of the need to know all about the narcissist Yes, absolutely. Initially learning about narcissists and what they do and why they do it is really helpful. But after that point of, of knowing that I can't have a true relationship with a false self, then you need to let go of the need to know all about them because that's never going to heal you. 
what you do need to start doing is decide to become deeply acquainted with your own inner being. Most people try to research their way out of the pain and the trauma by learning everything about a narcissist. It doesn't work. Your head, your logical thinking has no ability to reach and heal your inner somatic being, which is where your belief systems and your programs reside. This, this is the engine 95% of your life unfolds from this place. And no matter how much you know logically, you are not going to escape your trauma and your programming by trying to think your way out of it. And I want you to feel into this because it's so, so true. I'm going to demonstrate this to you very, very easily. You would not say, I think devastated you would say, I feel devastated. Those feelings of devastation and trauma and being cheated on and deceived and unloved and used and abused, they're not thinking thoughts. They're feelings in your body. You have to come within to meet those feelings, those programs, those trauma, that literal dense energy that is destroying you and hurting you, you have to meet it in your body. Narcissistic abuse is about, recovery from it, is about deep inner healing. It's not about trying to think your way out of it. It actually doesn't work. And it's so interesting because people who are the most logical, intelligent, and even brilliant people that are in their heads are the most susceptible to narcissistic abuse and stunted recoveries because they believe, I can think my way out of this. No, you can't think your way out of this. You cannot think your way out of deep emotional trauma. This isn't a logical deal. This is an emotional healing deal. And that was huge for me to accept back then. It wasn't until I got completely broken that I finally accepted that. And you don't have to get as broken as what I was. So the truth is you have to turn inwards and you have to feel and be with and self partner with your trauma to heal your way through it. Okay, so the third tip I wanna give you is again, so important. It's about accepting and making this happen for a reason as your mission because you could stay in no I was just a helpless victim and this didn't happen for a reason and this has got nothing to do with me that equals how to lose it means that it's not possible for you to do a recovery I understand why you want to think that and stay there because I was there for years as well but I'm just going to be straight with you. You cannot recover from that place because you have to turn this around. And what you have to do is not, you have to go from, this is about what happened to me. You have to make the switch, which is out there. This is what happened to me to turn inwards, to say and ask yourself and do your development at the level of why did this happen to me? And this happened for the ultimate purpose of offering you the opportunity to clean up faulty programming, already existing trauma, where you had energy gaps, where you were handing, handing your power away to ascend and go forth onto the trajectories that you really wanna live. And if you embrace this journey with all of your heart, you can understand the difference between being disconnected from self and not self-partnering to what happens when you do connect to self, you start self-partnering and you start releasing trauma and bringing in healthy, powerful programs instead of the dysfunctional, painful ones, which is exactly the process that NARP 
does in your body simply by following the instructions. And what you're going to start experiencing very, very quickly is that your boundaries will come online. You will start respecting and honoring yourself. You will start speaking up. You will start trusting your inner being when something feels wrong. And that whole neediness and dependency starts to fall away. So rather than talking yourself out of those intuitive feelings, oh, something's not right. I don't know if that's good for me. Oh, it'll be okay anyway, because you think that's the only way you can get love, approval, survival, or security, even if that's deeply unconscious. When you start releasing trauma and bringing in self and true empowerment, you are a source of love, approval, survival, and security, which means that if something becomes or somebody becomes unwholesome or, or abusive in your life, you can say, no, thank you, not my reality. And there's more, than, there's more to come in my life than that. There's more of the love, approval, survival, and security that I'm now generating as well-being for myself. And when that starts to happen, your life changes into an exciting, indulgent, because you get to enjoy and you get to feast on life. And it's a beautiful journey of creating the most incredible experiences in your life, which all comes from getting it right with the most important relationship in your life that you can ever have, the foundation of everything, which is the relationship with yourself. So that is three powerful tips that I really need you to understand for you. And my Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, which is known as NARP, is the most powerful and potent way I know of to achieve this. It's a 10 step program where all you have to do is follow the instructions and there's so much support with it. And it takes you through the releasing of those traumas that have got you unconsciously in this and takes you in that step-by-step -step process to unravel them and heal them and deliver you back to your true authentic self. Maybe that true authentic self that you've never discovered and lived through until going through that process. So to find out more, you can click the link that appears now on this video. So I really hope that that has helped and those three steps have helped, those three tips have helped given you a uh, hope that your recovery is so doable to not just survive, but to truly thrive. If this video really spoke to you, I'd love you to like and also share with other people that you know need this help. And of course, make sure that you subscribe so you're going to get every one of my episodes notification as soon as I release it. And as always, I so look forward to answering your comments and your questions below. Until the next one, Keep smiling, keep healing, and keep thriving because there is nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.